Hello, my name is Hossein Chafar, and in this talk, I will present Droplet, a new decentralized authorization system for encrypted data streams. This work has been done in collaboration with Lucas, Sylvia, and Anwar. In the last few years, we have seen a massive ramp up in collecting streaming data. This trend is fueled by the proliferation of cheap sensors, which allow for high precision monitoring of states and dynamics, and by our realization that capturing this information can allow for better reasoning and decision making, both in short and long terms. There is an immense value in extracting information from this data, especially if used data from different sources to drive large-scale analytics. To date, the norm in the compute paradigm of streaming applications, for example, Internet of Things, has been that users' data is collected from various sources and it is governed by the respective application providers. The problem with the status quo is that because data lives in narrow and disjoint silos, it severely limits a user's ability to control access to our data and extract additional value from it by fusing data from multiple sources, for instance. For example, in the medical use case, today it's not straightforward to combine users' data from multiple sources to provide a new utility in a convenient and secure way. This problem has led many to call for a new user-centric model for the Internet of Things, in which the storage of user data is decoupled from the application logic and control over access to this data is in the hands of end users rather than the service providers. However, if we are to realize this paradigm, we need system designs that ensures and that ensure users' ability to selectively and securely grant access to the data. And this is exactly the focus of this work. A secure approach is relying on end-to-end -end encryption, where data is encrypted at the user devices and stored only in encrypted form at the storage providers. In this setting, encryption and decryption operations are only executed at authorized parties and services without disclosing any encryption keys to intermediaries. This, however, makes it hard to enable fine-grained data protection, in other words, enabling um, selective sharing of encrypted data. This leaves us with the question of how to support flexible stream access control policies over encrypted data. The other challenge we address in this work is related to how do we control and manage access authorization. Standard deployments today rely on a trusted intermediary who issues authorization tokens, which then a service can inspect for granting data access. These systems, however, do not provide any cryptographic guarantees whatsoever and are decoupled from the underlying data protection. Moreover, they assume that the entity which enforces access control is within the data owner's trusted domain and consequently can see the data in the clear. So the challenge we address in this work is how to design a decentralized authorization service without requiring centralized trust while adhering to the end-to-end -end encryption paradigm. And with this, I would like to share with you some insights about Droplet, a decentralized access uh, service which aims to address these challenges in the context of stream data. With Droplet, we present a design that couples a decentralized authorization service and an encryption-based access control construction, um, which is tailored for stream data. We introduce a decentralized authorization service which operates without a central uh, authority. It protects the privacy and integrity of access permissions while ensuring their discoverability. Before I dive in into the system design of Droplet and present some of uh, the components, I will give a high level overview of the system actors and their trust assumptions. We consider an advisory who is interested in learning um, about users' data and our threat model covers malicious storage nodes, potential real-world security vulnerabilities, which lead to data leakages, and also external adversaries who gain access to the data as a result of system compromise. In this context, the data producer represents devices, for example, wearables, appliances, services, which produce uh, stream data and store this data on remote storage services. Data consumers are entities that access data to extract utility, for instance, a real-time heart, uh, heart attack detection service, and we assume these entities are semi-trusted in that they have restricted access to data as specified by the user's access policy. The data owner is, uh, is the entity that defines who can access what part of the data and for how long. Uh, we also have the centralized authorization layer, an entity that maintains access control policies in an append-only uh, distributed log, um, as, as well underlying the certificate transparency or blockchains. The underlying trust assumption there is rooted in the employed consensus protocols. 
I'll start by discussing how we encrypt data in Droplet to support fine grain access control on encrypted data. The data producer generates a stream of time series data and stores only encrypted data on the cloud. The key idea behind our encryption-based access control is to serialize stream data into chunks, where each chunk corresponds to a time segment and is encrypted to the unique encryption key. This is based on the insight that time is the natural dimension of accessing data streams. Hence, we design our access control with time as the prime access principle. The challenge here becomes how to efficiently generate and manage a large number of unique encryption keys and allow expressing access policies that are relevant, um, that are, uh, relevant to stream data, basically data subscription and time interval sharing with a minimum shared state that is then used to derive all the decryption, all the decryption keys associated with the access policy. To address this specific challenge, we introduce a new key management construction. The key idea here is to map keys to, uh, to the temporal segments of the stream data, basically time encoded key stream, such that access to the data stream can be restricted by only sharing the corresponding range in the key stream with the principal. Based on the access policy, the principal gains access to the necessary decryption keys captured in an access token. To enable sharing without enumerating all the keys and expressing stream access policies in a succinct shared state, we design a key derivation construction that synthesizes the concepts of hash trees and dual key regression for sharing access to either a time interval or bounded subscription sharing, for example, access to a data stream from January 2020 until revoked. Although, key, uh, although crypto uh, um, based access control is uh, powerful, it is not sufficient by itself as it does not adequately handle uh, authorization and revocation. We address these aspects um, with a decentralized authorization service that interplays well with our crypto-based access control construction. We realize uh, the authorization log using a publicly verifiable blockchain to maintain a distributed access control state without a central trusted entity. While blockchains provide an alternative trust model, their use uh, uh, comes as well with challenges. Currently deployed blockchains exhibit a high overhead and low bandwidth due to their consensus protocols. While read operations are fast, chain writes are inherently slow. Hence the key challenge is how to bypass these limitations. We design droplets such that blockchain operations are not on the critical path uh, of reading or writing data, as we store the absolute minimum control metadata in the blockchain and outsource data streams and metadata to off-chain storage by leveraging indirections. This design minimizes the bandwidth requirements on the blockchain and allows for lightweight clients. Droplets authorization service can leverage an existing public blockchain to maintain a replicated state machine for access control. This design allows any node to independently bootstrap the authorization state in a decentralized manner and check the access permissions. Access permissions are cached at the storage node for their hosted content along low latency lookups uh, of access permissions. An authorized data consumer can retrieve data and compute the decryption keys locally based on the encrypted authorization token. We developed a prototype of, top, uh, of Droplet and quantified Droplet's overhead and compared its performance to the state-of-the-art systems. For data storage, we consider two different use cases, one where data is stored on a typical cloud environment, in this case, um, the AWS three, uh, S3 service. We also deploy Droplet with a decentralized storage layer to give insights about its potential for the emerging decentralized storage services, such as IPFS or Filecoin, to just name two examples. Our benchmarks on different type of platforms from constrained IT devices to small cloud compute uh, units gives us more insight on the performance trade-offs of Droplet. We show Droplet's potential as an authorization service for the serverless paradigm than AWS Lambda-based prototype. We combine Lambda as a serverless computing platform, either with AWS's native authorization service referred to as AWS Cognito and compared to Droplet as Lambda's authorization service. We observe Droplet's performance to be within the range of the industry standard protocol for authorization, in this particular case, OAuth uh, 2. Looking at the uh, read throughput uh, results for the two different storage types, we observed that in the case of AWS S3 service, 
we are within the expected range of serving more than 200 requests per second, and the overhead of droplet compared to the vanilla version amounts to roughly 3%. In the case of the peer-to-peer -peer storage network, the throughput is decreased with the number of storage nodes due to the logarithmic routing overhead and reaches 100 requests per second for about 1,000 storage nodes in a cluster. To understand these numbers better, let us look at the latency results. This plot shows the latency for storing and retrieving a data chunk of size 4 kilobyte. Here we can clearly observe that the overhead is dominated uh, by the routing operation and increases with more storage nodes within a cluster. In case of AWS S3, the store overhead increases by 10% compared to the vanilla S3. The store operation is more expensive as it includes the compression, encryption, and signature operations. This was rather a compact overview of Droplet a new decentralized authorization and access control system that empowers users with data ownership and control over their data. Thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to take your questions.